So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video. And as you can see, we've got a nice little backdrop today, something a little bit different back here. Just set this up, but I digress. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Windows 365 on the iPad Pro. I've been using it for a little over two weeks now because it released on August 2nd. So I guess we're 18, 19 days into it. And I wanted to answer a bunch of questions that you guys have been asking. So the main one is, can you do external SSD support? Is there secondary monitor support? Those are the two main ones. And then you guys also asked, How's the overall performance been over the last two weeks now that, you know, probably all the free subscriptions and all the people kind of inundating those servers has kind of come down a little bit. So now, ideally, the latency and the connectivity should be a little bit better because not as many people are on it. So without further ado, let's dive into Windows 365, talk about pretty much everything from pricing to setup to then also all those little things that we spoke about in the very beginning. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we begin, we gotta preface this, if this is your first time on the channel, that I'm dealing with the M1, the baseline iPad Pro. So eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and that M1 processor, and no data. So again, this one was $1,100, and that's what we're using to run Windows 365. But the first thing that I do wanna show you real quick is the Windows 365 pricing. So if we go to Windows 365 pricing, let it load up for a second, go to the pricing model, and again, I wanna show off the pricing because it's really not that cheap when you think about it. It's pretty expensive, right? So if we go on here, you can see that the pricing starts at $24 per user per month, but that gets you one core, two gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage. What somebody would use that power for is beyond me, right? Because I don't think you can do anything with that kind of power. So that's probably just like a storage device or something. But the one that I'm using is the four gig, 128 gigabytes of storage, two cores so this is the one that i'm on the 35 dollars a month one and that was the cheapest model or the baseline model that was offered with the free trial unfortunately the free trial as you can see right here following significant demand we have reached capacity for the free trials but i'm hoping that now that you know the the dust has settled a little bit we've gone two two and a half weeks since windows 365 was launched back in august 2nd that now the servers that have been kind of hosting all of this new entry and being again unundated or inundated, I don't even know how to say that word, with so many new users, that the latency has kind of gotten a little bit better now. So ideally that's what should happen, but again, I'm also dealing with a pretty weak computer, or at least weak cloud computer. But if you can see, you can spec this thing up to $162 a month, 512 gigs of storage, 32 gigs of RAM, eight cores, and at that point, that's a pretty powerful computer. But if you think about it, for $160 a month, multiply that by 12, you're dealing with about I don't know, what is that, like $1,800, almost $2,000 a year for a cloud PC? At that point, I recommend spending that same exact money on a computer that's gonna last you three, four years, and then get the longevity out of that. Because at the same time, you know, over that three, four year span, you're gonna spend eight grand on this same spec'd out computer that's in the cloud. Now, yes, you won't deal with things getting old because everything's gonna be continuously updated, and I'm sure Microsoft is gonna make sure that you're using the latest and greatest like specs and hardware on the server side, but at the same time, a computer's gonna last you four years at $2,000. So that's where it gets a little bit iffy when it comes to pricing. But now that we got pricing out of the way and you guys know what you're getting yourselves into, there's no more free trial, I kinda wanna show you guys exactly what it looks like on the iPad Pro, what my recommendations are, and then also some limitations that I've noticed with the iPad Pro, especially versus running Windows 365 on a MacBook Air, on an M1 MacBook Air. Because I'll leave that video down in the description, I'll put it like in the cards right here. That video, I was able to run Windows 365 and run it very, very well on the M1 MacBook Air with secondary monitor support and among other things that the iPad Pro is kind of limited with. But to get into the video of how Windows 365 runs on the iPad Pro, my biggest recommendation is using the remote desktop client. My biggest mistake with the original video was I was using it on Google Chrome, in Safari, and on Microsoft Edge. And those are all browsers, right? Yes, Safari is a desktop class browser for the iPad Pro, but even then, it wasn't meant for it. Every time I went full screen, I would press one button and it would kind of go back from full screen to normal and it would get rid of my start menu on the windows. I'll leave that one also linked below because that was a horrendous experience that I would not recommend, especially as a final product. But then working within the remote desktop client, it's a much better experience. So all you do is you connect it. I've showed that in the past. You basically just have to link it with one link. Make sure that you're adding a new workspace and not a new PC, because that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a new workspace. So it's gonna tell you to log in. Again, you can see I have two cores, four gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, and we're brought right into a Windows 10 platform, a Windows 10 cloud PC that I'm getting from servers wherever Microsoft is holding them. But 
you can see that immediately I'm using, like I said, the iPad Pro with a magic keyboard. And normally if I get out of here, the mouse is this little new circular thing which Apple brought in about two years ago. And I love this mouse, but when you're working with Windows, you don't want that mouse cursor because it's not precise enough. So what the beauty about this is, is that automatically I'm back to a normal traditional cursor, which is awesome. So I don't have to deal with that circular cursor, which is, which is something that you would have to deal with if you were dealing with the browser itself and going through the browser. So again, I don't know why Microsoft is opening or Microsoft Teams is opening right now, but I'm gonna close it. Cause you can see that this computer is gonna be very slow. Two cores isn't gonna do much, even if you buy the physical computer. Like this computer, like off the, sh off the rack or off the shelf will probably cost you like two to $400. It's more of like Chromebook specs than anything else. But you can see that, again, there's a little bit of latency. It could be the connectivity issues, but again, I have four to 600 megabytes download and upload speeds on Wi-Fi with multiple people on here. And then wired connection, I'm in a gigabit connection, so I get 900 megabytes to a gig of download and upload speeds. So I don't think it's anything to do with my Wi-Fi connection because they they're claiming that you need 15 to 30 megabytes per second download speeds to successfully connect to the server. And then once you're connected to the server, then you're using their internet speeds. So if you do a speed test, which we can do right now, the speed test that I'm gonna show you, it's not my personal Wi-Fi speeds, it's the speeds that we're dealing with on the server side, on the hardware side, wherever everything is stored, right? So again, I'm gonna open this up a little bit. We'll make it full screen so you guys can see what we're dealing with. And look at that, we're dealing with 500 megabytes, 400 megabytes of download speeds, which is equivalent to my Wi-Fi speeds. But again, this is like hardwired in. You're not using the internet as a Wi-Fi, you're using the computer as a cloud PC. So the computer that's in the server is hardwired in to whatever Microsoft is willing to do. So you can see, look at those upload speeds, 1.3, 1.4 gigs. That's very, very impressive. But we'll X out of here, and I'm just gonna walk you guys through some simple things. So let's open up Microsoft Edge. Let's go to you know youtube.com. And you can see I'm using the Magic Keyboard. It's recognizing it perfectly. I'm using the, the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard to scroll with two fingers so it does work. Again, the latency, is, it's there. There's a little bit of latency, but again, it could be the fact that this computer is so weak and so slow. And then another thing to notice is that if you go into the browser version of this, every time you log into that browser, you're gonna have to re-go into the settings to then change like the default microphone, the default speaker, all those default settings, versus with the remote desktop client, if you hop into a video, automatically you're getting the sound coming directly from the iPad Pro speakers, which is awesome. With no need to actually go into the settings every single time to change that. Same thing goes with the microphone. So that's amazing to see and the video camera. So if you're in the middle of a video chat, you're using the native camera on the iPad Pro with the software up in the cloud. So again, we can make this smaller. What I can do is open up a start menu, go through the settings. So let's click on the settings menu right here. So everything works as a normal Windows computer, right? Which is awesome to see and it's something that we've been wanting for a long time, especially Windows users. So again, if you are in a pickle, and like I think the people know who they are if they wanna use Windows 365 primarily on the iPad Pro because this is not for everybody. Like I would almost recommend just getting the regular Office 365 license if you need to be inside of that ecosystem and use the applications directly from the App Store on the iPad because those applications are, you know, they get you 90 to 95% of the way there compared to like Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. On the iPad Pro, they work super well. So there's only a certain type of person that needs to go into a native Windows operating system while using their iPad Pro to access something that maybe on their iPad Pro they can't do. So another thing that I did wanna show you is, again, the limitations. So I've tried to connect thumb drives to the iPad Pro, and unfortunately, when you do connect thumb drives, they are not recognized by here. They're recognized by the file systems in the iPad Pro, but they're not recognized by the cloud PC. Because again, because again, you're dealing with a physical hard drive, which means that you need to like cloudify that hard drive and then send it to the cloud. So there's like, there's a way to do it, but it's a little bit tedious and there's like, it's just not worth it at that point. At that point, just put it on your native computer and your, your native iPad and you're good to go. And then another big limitation is secondary monitor support. So again, if you guys are iPad Pro users or iPad users at all, you guys know that one of the biggest detriments to iPad OS over the years has been the lack of secondary monitor support because all you get is a mirrored version of whatever you're looking at on the iPad Pro. Yes, there are some applications that take advantage of it, but Windows 365 is not one of them. So I'll show you guys some B-roll of what it looks like when you do go through secondary monitor support. I mean, it looks cool, I guess. You, you get an experience of a larger display running Windows from an iPad Pro, but it's still letterbox. It's still not a secondary extension monitor. It's still a mirrored monitor and things like that. So again, overall, it's not a perfect situation. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you is multitasking. Like, can you multitask 
with iPad apps while running Windows 365 or Windows 10. So, because again, on the screen, you have the regular Windows on here, right? Windows 10, you're in the remote desktop client, but if you go down, then all of a sudden, this is all iPad OS. So let's say if I wanna pull up a Safari tab, you can't multitask with two side by side, but you can multitask when it comes to here. So one thing that I do wanna test out is, let's say I open up a Microsoft Edge, and let's say I go up here, if I wanna copy this, Control C, and bring it over here, Control V, you can see that the shortcuts don't work. So it doesn't, there's no like cross-platform shortcut. So if I copy on here and try to paste on here, there's no like clipboard that'll let me copy from iPad OS over to Windows. So again, there's still like a big break in the operating system, which I hope Microsoft at some point fixes because you can't like collaborate within one another, which is kind of weird. When on the MacBook Air, you have some sort of semblance of file transfer and again, copy and pasting. There's, there's a little bit more that you can do versus the iPad Pro, the, the OSs are so broken and different that it's just, there's no compatibility aside from being able to use Windows through the remote desktop client. But those are the things that I wanted to show you. Again, this is the two week review. I've been going through a bunch of things to see exactly what those limitations are. And the three big ones are secondary monitor support, multitasking within the operating system, and then finally, external storage support. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there are some limitations with Windows 365 on the iPad Pro. I think the perfect situation for Windows 365 to be used with the iPad Pro is if you need you know, a Windows 10 computer on the fly quickly for some minimal task work, especially if you're dealing with one of the lower rated cloud PCs like the one that I'm using, the two core, you know, four gigs of RAM, only 128 gigs. You know, if you really want your computer to be powerful, you're gonna have to ante up, you know, $100, $150 a month. And at that point, I would just recommend getting another computer because you can spend $2,000 on a pretty good Windows computer that ideally should last you three or four years versus paying $2,000 a year over two or three, four years for that same computer, which yes, I know it'll get updates consistently. You know, honestly, it probably won't age and it won't kind of get slower over time like most computers do. But at the same time, it just gets very expensive, especially for use cases. So for the iPad Pro, the perfect use case, like I said, is smaller minimal tasks. If you need to get into, let's say an Outlook or maybe PowerPoint, or maybe again, you have something on that actual cloud PC that isn't on your physical device, then okay, then it's worth it. But at the same time, the Microsoft applications, the native applications on the iPad Pro that you get from the App Store are more than capable of doing those quick action tasks, even with PowerPoint and Excel and Word and things like that. So. I don't really know who Windows 365 is for on the iPad Pro. I see a lot of uses outside of the iPad Pro, but again, it's very cool. The demo is awesome. The fact that we can run Windows 10 almost natively directly from Microsoft without having to do like parallels or having to do a cloud PC or having to remote desktop in yourself to your own PC and things like that. I think it's a great product, but I think it's a little too expensive. And I think the target market for the iPad Pro, it's just not really the target market. Cause at that point, like I said, go to the app store and download the Microsoft apps because those apps themselves get you 90 to 95% of the way to the traditional desktop version of those applications. So all in all, it's really cool. I don't think I'm gonna stick around after the two month free trial. I get, again, I was lucky enough to get onto it early enough where they were still doing those free trials. Unfortunately, now they're not doing them anymore. But like I said, overall, Windows 365 is an awesome demo. It's an awesome, I guess, feat that Windows can actually do that or Microsoft can actually do that on the iPad Pro and be almost operating system agnostic. So you can use on Windows, Mac, iPad, Android, iOS, whatever you wanna use it, even Linux, I believe, to be able to pull this cloud PC down. So I love that they're being app and OS agnostic. But again, the use cases are so small that the target audience for an iPad Pro user, it's gonna be very, very niche and very, very specific for you to wanna spend that kind of money on a cloud PC to run on your iPad Pro. But again, for the most part, it's not gonna be super beneficial and you know who you are if you need Windows 365 on the iPad Pro, by all means, and it's gonna be worth it to you. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully you guys learned something new. Let me know down below, are you guys subscribed to Windows 365? If you aren't, what would make it better for you? Let me know in the comments below because for me, it would be letting me do secondary monitor support and that external SSD support as well. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, comment down below some new video ideas when it comes to the iPad Pro, maybe Windows and productivity and things like that. And we got some new accessories coming in like a brand new monitor that's gonna work a lot better with the iPad Pro amongst other things. But until next time,